every tear from their eyes, <clears throat> and there shall be no more death, or mourning, crying, or pain, for former things have passed away. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Although physically present are only the members of Grey Garth and Brook, we've formed a bubble now for a long time. We also very much welcome all those people who are joining us through the internet, through live streaming, and I know that there's a lot of you, so we are very welcome, and we thank you for being with us in our prayer today for Pedro, asking that Lord, asking the Lord to bring him into his sight at the same time. Each of us, perhaps personally confident that he is already there with the Lord and seeking his intercession. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, glory of the faithful and life of the just, by the death and resurrection of whose Son we have been redeemed, look mercifully on your departed servant, Pedro, that just as he professed the mystery of our resurrection, so he may merit to receive the joys of eternal happiness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since all the children share the same blood and flesh, Jesus too shared equally in it, so that by his death he could take away all the power of the devil, who had power over death, and set free all those who had been held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. For it was not the angels that he took to himself, he took to himself descent from Abraham. It was essential that he should in this way become completely like his brothers, so that he could be a compassionate and trustworthy high priest of God's religion, able to atone for human sins, that is, because he was himself been through temptation, he is able to help others who are tempted. The word of the Lord. Responsorial song. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Give thanks to the Lord, tell his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. O oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Be proud of his holy name. Let the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. O children of Abraham, his servant, 
O sons of the Jacob he chose. He, the Lord, is our God. His judgment prevails in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. His promise for a thousand generations. The covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his covenant forever. Alleluia, alleluia. Let the message of Christ in all his richness find a home with you. Through him give thanks to God the Father. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On leaving the synagogue, Jesus went with James and John straight to the house of Simon and Andrew. Now Simon's mother-in-law had gone to bed with fever, and they told him about her straight away. He went to her, took her by the hand and helped her up, and the fever left her, and she began to wait on him. That evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by de devils. The whole town came crowding round the door, and he cured many who were suffering from diseases of one kind or another. He also cast out many devils, but he would not allow them to speak, because they knew who he was. In the morning, long before dawn, he got up and left the house, and went off to a lonely place and prayed there. Simon and his companions set out in search of him, and when they found him, they said, Everybody is looking for you. He answered, Let us go elsewhere, to the neighboring country towns, so I can preach there too, because that is why I came. And he went all through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and casting out devils. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Petra Ballester was an exceptionally bright and hard-working young man. He was talented, focused, intelligent, and mature beyond his age. He dealt comfortably and confidently with people of all types. He wasn't in awe to anyone. He'd managed to earn a place to study chemical engineering at Imperial College London, one of the best universities in the world. He began his course and was doing well, his high quality work and pleasant maturity earning him the respect and affection of both his colleagues and teachers. Everything suggested that Pedro had a glowing future ahead of him. In human terms, he could expect a successful and prestigious career in a field which opened up numerous lucrative job possibilities. One wouldn't have been surprised to see some 20 years down the, la down the line, a 40 or, year, 40 or so year old Pedro, a senior executive in some important multinational, giving a talk to students in a place like this, describing his high flying career and inspiring others to follow in his footsteps. And then, aged 18, he was diagnosed with cancer. He had all the potential I've just described about, and anybody who knew Pedro knows that I'm not exaggerating. And with all that potential, do you know what, do you know what is the very best thing that Pedro did? I'll tell you. The very best thing that Pedro did was to die young. Or more exactly, the very best thing Pedro did, far better than any degree, be it under or postgraduate, that any of you might have done or be doing, the very best thing that Pedro did was to suffer and die in God, to give God his young life. Today a thought occurred to me, which has never occurred to me before. 
and I've thought a lot about Pedro, I can assure you. I was in fact surprised that such an obvious thought hadn't previously entered my mind. The thought was simply this, that the three years of Pedro's suffering, intense suffering, were like a university degree. At least here in the United Kingdom, degrees are often three years long. Pedro decided to study chemical engineering. God asked him to change his degree. He gave him instead a very intense course in suffering. Yes, suffering was the curriculum, the syllabus which Pedro was given to study. And not in some abstract intellectual manner, but in the most personal flesh and blood manner you can imagine. And he passed with distinction. Pedro knew suffering from every aspect, in so many forms which wouldn't be appropriate to describe here. Suffice to say that he experienced nausea, exhaustion, constant discomfort, intense pain, that he ended up bedbound and with legs so swollen that they seemed like elephant necks. And again, I'm not exaggerating. Anybody who knows him, who knew his sickness, knows that's true. And we can add he knew fear, the fear of not knowing what might befall him and when. And he knew humiliation, constantly having to rely on others, even for such basic things as going to the bathroom. And again, much more, but it wouldn't be appropriate here. Somebody might be squeamish, so let's leave it there. Apart from a few months of respite, when the proton beam therapy seemed to have worked, Pedro never rested from suffering. It was frequently intense, so intense that it would bring tears to his eyes. And Pedro was a tough northerner. He didn't cry easily. So intense that at times, Pedro would say to those closest to him, only to these, because everyone else got a smile or questions about themselves, about their things, not his. But to these at times, Pedro would say, I can't take this anymore. But he did, and he offered it to God, and suffering became his best prayer. And just as the best study, the best degree, is not only for one's own benefit, but for others, for the service of society, Pedro constantly used his studies, his suffering, for others. He offered it for others, and he prayed for them. He would pray for things that people asked him to pray for, and he'd remember to ask them about them later. He would welcome people always and happily and comfortably speak to them about their things and deep matters too, including God. The Christ he studied in suffering was the Christ he tried to share with others, just as we like to talk about our degree subjects. And although people recognise Pedro as direct, occasionally blunt, I've not heard of anybody finding anything he said of putting. Well, apart from his younger brothers, but that's to be expected. We heard in today's first reading, since all the children share the same blood and flesh, Christ too shared equally in it, so that by his death he could take away all the power of the devil, who had power over death, and set free all those who had been held in slavery all their lives by the fear of death. Now these are mysterious words which would require a lot of unpacking. But let's say simply that this text is talking to us about our Lord Jesus, God the Son, sharing in our human flesh, sharing in our sufferings and death, to turn death from a curse to the way to life. We no longer die under Satan's power. We can die in Christ's love. We can therefore lose our fear of death, as Pedro did. Jesus has power over Satan and his demons, and even over disease, as we see in today's gospel. We see him saving Peter's mother from her fever. 
Jesus didn't save Pedro from his fever. From, because this fever, this, this disease, was precisely his way to holiness. And so we can say that Jesus saved him in a deeper way. By giving that disease meaning and making it for him the path to life. May the Blessed Virgin Mary, who turned her eyes of mercy to Pedro throughout his illness, and particularly at the hour of his death, help us to learn what really matters in life, the course that is really worth studying. Not success in the eyes of men, but that course of prayer and self-denial which will lead us to glory. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. The grace and glory is His name. For our good and good all the churches. Look with favour, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make for the soul of your servant, Pedro, that being cleansed by heavenly remedies, his soul may be ever alive and blessed in your glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. First preface of the dead and the third Eucharistic prayer. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift your heart the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned. That those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you grace. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, o Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, he given you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, save the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognise him the sacrificial victim, by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Jose Maria, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and John the Bishop of this diocese, Fernando our prelate, the order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Pedro, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died, and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleased with you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end, through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form our divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us all, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lord God will destroy death forever. He will wipe away the tears from every cheek. The body of Christ. Amen.
Let us pray. Restored by these sacred mysteries, we humbly beseech your Lord that your servant Pedro may be cleansed from all offences and merit for all eternity the great, the, the precious gift of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen.